Okay, so now we're going to do some example problems from section 1.3. First we're going to talk about is finding the domain and range of this piecewise defined function. Uh, please bear in mind that it is implied that these extend onto infinity. This is important because the domain, if you look at this, there's no limit to the possible x values. That is, whatever you plug in is fine. Now you may be concerned about what's happening here at zero, but if you look, it's not here at zero. It is here, which makes it a function, right? So it, it does have a value at zero, so it means we get to include that. The range. If we look at this function, it goes up all the way, you know, positive infinity, any possible x, or sorry, y. But then if we look, there is a, a floor, if you will, a lowest value, which turns out to be negative 3 in the x. Now, is it equal to negative 3? Yes. In fact, at 0, it's equal to negative 3. So we find f of 0, we got an answer right there. And it's at negative 3, and it is including negative 3, hard bracket, right? And then heading off to positive infinity, which, and I just answered this, f of 0, because it has a nice shaded in circle, is equal to negative 3. Okay? Now, this next, increasing and decreasing functions. So we've got a quadratic, and we know that it's decreasing up until a point, and then it's increasing. So we have our increasing and decreasing. Where is that happening? Now remember, increasing and decreasing is always in terms of the x. So it turns out the break point here is at x equals 2. We don't necessarily need to know this, the actual coordinate. It is 2, negative 4 if you're curious. But we're really actually curious about where that breaks. So what we need to be thinking is that we're starting here and heading off this way and looking at the graph. So starting over here, which is negative infinity, right? Uh, heading towards positive infinity, right? We're looking at this graph and it's decreasing up until, uh, and, and not including this point because something else is happening. So it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way up to, but not including, x equals 2. That's that location, right? And then at 2, what happens? It is constant, it, if only for a brief instant, just at 2. So actually we would say, sorry, we didn't use any sort of inequalities. We really can't. We could indicate the point. We'd say it's constant at 2, negative 4. Or we could just say at x equals 2, that's where it's actually constant. Because then what happens after that? It starts going up. Think about it this way. Decreasing negative slope, increasing positive. What happens between negatives and positives? Zero or constant. So our increasing Remember, we're sliding along the x here, starts, but does not include 2, right? And then heads off to positive infinity. Now, this next one, use a graphing utility to graph the function. Yeah, if you look at that and you didn't, that'd be problematic. Uh, so this is what it looks like, and I'm going to indicate some key points here. So looking at this, what we have is a graph that looks kind of like this. Not even kind of, that's what it looks like. This point right here is negative 4, negative 5, and this point is 1, negative 5. So we're asked to open intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So, so the open intervals on which it's increasing, decreasing, and constant. So. I would argue that the graph, as remember we're starting here at negative infinity, heading all the way over here to positive infinity, first thing that happens is it is increasing all the way from negative infinity up to, but not including, open intervals, right? Negative 4. Remember, it's all about the x. So that's negative 4 is where that's happening. Negative 4. Then what? Looks like the graph goes flat, aka constant, all the way up to, but not including, 1. It's constant at this point, and then it decreases, goes down, right? Starting where? At 1. Off to, well, the rest of the graph. And that's it. Negative x cubed plus 3x squared. So relative minimum and maximum, so we're, at, we're asked to use a graphing utility, which if we do, ends up giving us a, now this is an x cubed, cubic function. It's been reflected, so it's going to end up Starting here, here, bouncing, coming up to some sort of minimum, sorry, maximum, and then looks like that. 
this point works out to be 0, 0. If you plug 0 in for x, you're going to get 0 for y, which makes sense. This point is 2, 4. And what this means is we've got, well, it's pretty easy. We have a relative min and we have a relative max. Reason that these are relative is because this graph goes on to positive infinity and negative infinity, which means this point, this point right here, let's start with this one, looks like a low point, but only for that local area. Whereas this point looks like, like a high point. So this looks like a max and it's a relative max. And this is a relative min. So you just say relative min, zero, zero, relative max, two, four, and that's it. Sketching a piecewise function. Okay, so here's what's happening. There's a key point here, negative three, then for negative three to one, it's a certain thing, and then at one again. So we're gonna have to have our values, get, our, get ourselves squared away here. So we're gonna have negative three, right? That's negative three in the x. And one are gonna be some key points where this graph changes. Okay, it's gonna be x plus five, right? Up until, uh, but not including, up until well, actually including negative three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug negative three in, and if we do negative three plus five, we get two, which means at negative three, where it's this linear graph, including that point, right, it's gonna be a positive two. So that means that that point right there exists on the graph. What is it before that? It's a linear function with a positive slope, so it's going up, right? Then what? At five, I'm sorry, at negative three, from negative three to one, it's gonna be equal to five, so this is constant, meaning it's going to be one, three, four, five, so that's five, right? What it's gonna do is it's gonna jump. It does not include those values at that point, so what it's gonna be is an open circle here, that way it's still a function, and an open circle here, and then it's gonna just go constant. That's what this is. This is y equals five, the horizontal line. And last but not least, at this point, it's equal to at, it's equal to at 1, it's equal to 5x minus 4, so we take 5 times 1 minus 4, which equals, well, 5 minus 4 is 1, which means at that point it's equal to, or equal to 1, and then it's what? Well, what does 5x minus 4 look like? Well, it looks like a linear equation again, but with a what? Much steeper slope. So I'm trying to make this look steeper than this. Positive 1 slope, positive 5 slope, and that's it. Even in odd functions. So... Use a graphing utility to determine whether or not this is even or odd. So this is a cube root function, which is the inverse of a cubic function. Um, so it turns out this thing looks like that. And it turns out it's crossing at one here. Now, two things. In order to be even, it would have to have reflective symmetry over the y-axis, right? But it does not. So it's not even, does not reflect, so it's not even, reflect over the y axis. Now, if it were odd, then it would have rotational symmetry, which means when you rotate 180 degrees, so if I take about the origin and I rotate 180 degrees, that puts me over here where there is no graph. So it is not odd because it does not show symmetry about the origin. It's a fancy way of showing, saying that it's not showing rotation of 180 degrees about the origin. It does not map onto itself. What does that make this? Therefore, this function is neither even nor odd. odd. Okay. Now, a think about it. So if we have this point, 5, negative 1, we want us A, find another point such that the, it is on the graph that the function is even, and B, such that it is odd. Now remember, even shows reflection symmetry about the line y equals 0, that is, Sorry, x equals zero, that is the x axis, right? And this shows rotational symmetry of 180 degrees about the origin. That's gonna be kind of important. 
Meaning, if I'm looking at 5, negative 1, which by the way is 5, negative 1, that's right around here, right? Now, if I reflect that over the y-axis, this is the y-axis, right? That means it's going to be the same distance, but on the other side, so somewhere over here. Well, it's still going to be a negative 1. It hasn't moved up or down, but it has moved to negative 5, negative 1. So that would be the other point. If it was even, this would be, would be the other point. Odd. Now, this is a little bit harder to visualize, but if you remember the formula, it does help. Here is the point 5, negative 1, right? What would happen if I rotated that 180 degrees about the origin? Well, one way to do that is if I were to connect that with a line and rotate it 180 degrees, then it would end up over here with that same distance. Now, if you forgot what happens, what the, the uh, rotation of 180 takes x, y, and makes it opposite x, opposite y, which means that that means that this would be negative 5, right? And this would be a positive 1 which means if this were odd, this point would have to be part of the graph. Okay, determine algebraically whether or not this is, now we're not gonna do graphically. We're gonna do it numerically and we'll do it algebraically. So to do this, what we need to do is figure out h of opposite x, that's gonna be our first step, so we're gonna plug negative x in. Notice the parentheses. And we're gonna do this. Now remember, odd, let me just simplify it. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out is h of x equal to h opposite x. And we're also trying to figure out is h of x equal to opposite h of x, which are two different things. This would mean it was even if it was a yes, and this would mean it was odd if it's a yes. So this is what we're, this is what we're basing our conclusion on. Now, when I take a negative number and I raise it to the fifth power, it's the same as just, well, it's going to give me a negative value every time. Just like here, well, negative cubed, that's going to be negative, but I already have a negative, so that becomes positive, 4x cubed. Comparing these two, h of x and h opposite x do not match. So this is not even. So what do we continue? We then find the opposite of h of x, and we compare, we see what's going on opposite of the original function. Notice the parentheses. We take the opposite, we get negative x to the fifth and positive 4x cubed. How do these two compare? I'm sorry. I made a slight misquote here. This should be h of opposite x. And how does it compare? to opposite h of x, but that's odd. So now what we have is we have opposite h of x, and then we compare it to h of x, that is this and this, which means that this is an odd function because they are indeed the same. So when I plug in the negative value, the opposite value of x, I get the same as if I take the opposite of y, which means they're rotations. Okay, and that concludes what we've got for Oh, wait, one last thing, actually. I did not show numerically how this works. So even and odd. So what we want to do is we're going to have uh, x, right? And we're going to do something relatively simple to plug in for x. And then we're going to do h of opposite x. And we're going to do opposite h of x. And then compare them, OK? All right, so if we take x, and we so we actually take, we'll take a, h of x. Let's say a, uh, what we're going to do, x equal to 1. We plug 1 in, we get 1 minus 4 or negative 3. Big whoop, you say. Okay, so now if we take op opposite x, what happens? Well, we put negative 1 in here, so that's a negative 1. So we already know that that's going to be negative 1 to the fifth. So that'll be negative 1. And then minus 4 times another negative 1. So it's going to be plus 4, which is 3. So if I plug negative 1 in, and trust me on this one, you'll get 3. Now what happens when I plug negative opposite, or sorry, opposite of h of x? Well, this is h of x. What is opposite of h of x? What's the opposite of negative 3? So what does this tell us? This tells us that h of opposite x and opposite h of x are the same. Same. What does that mean? It just shows us, again, another way to demonstrate that it's an odd function. In general, pick an x value that's simple to calculate. 
figure out h of x, h off of opposite of x, then take the opposite of the original h of x, and you have something to compare. And that's it. Thank you.